Hey folks, it's your wacky neighbor again with another electric lighter review and comparison. It's been two years since my first video on this topic, focused on this model, and a year and a half since my second where I showed off this smaller lightweight one. Both of these were notable for having small diameter heads that can fit down deep into the bottom of a pipe, which is not the case with most models on the market. Times have changed now though, and there's a new class of electric lighter that's a whole new ball game. All these older ones are now just quaint artifacts of a bygone era. I present the Keyzen Verve. The probes are about 3 eighths of an inch apart, much wider than the older models, which results in an arc of plasma large enough to move with air currents, much in the same way that a flame does. I was a little skeptical at first when I saw the picture, as I thought the lid might get in the way of sticking it down into a pipe, but it turns out that's not an issue at all, as you don't need to do that. You can hold it flat over the pipe, and easily draw the flame in all the way to the bottom. In calm air, the plasma will form an arc bowing slightly upwards, and that is true however you orient the lighter. This is an effect of buoyancy, or gravity pulling down on the surrounding air. In air with gentle laminar flow, the flame will grow, but stay as a distinct arc. In stronger turbulent flow, you'll see a shower of sparks like you're trying to turn someone to the dark side of the force. I've historically always preferred to use a traditional butane lighter when indoors, or when the weather is calm. Note how I start with the lighter over to the side of the pipe, and draw in the flame with my breath. This allows me to only light the material near the edge of the bowl, leaving the rest unburnt for later. So even though I am using a large bowl, I can smoke just a little at a time, in a controlled fashion. This sort of soft flame lighter is really frustrating to use outdoors in windy conditions though. So for many years, I've carried two lighters in my pocket, one for indoors and one for outdoors. Initially, the outdoor lighter had been a jet flame, like this. These are effective in windy conditions, but they can be temperamental, especially at high altitudes such as on a ski slope. I still prefer to soft flame when indoors, since you can control the ignition with more nuance, as I demonstrated. I was really excited for a short time when these dual flame lighters came out, because I would have one less thing in my pocket. Alas, I could never get them to operate reliably for more than a couple weeks, and gave up on them. Two years ago, I replaced the jet lighter with this electric one, but I still preferred to use an old-fashioned soft flame indoors, and was still carrying around two lighters in my pocket. That has now changed though, because I can use this new lighter indoors much the same way I would a flame. Just one lighter in my pocket, and I don't miss the old-fashioned ones. Can still draw the fire in with my breath to just light the edge. But using this outdoors in the wind is very different than any other type of lighter. The wind is not going to blow it out, but it will carry it along. So unless your breath is stronger than the wind, the flame may just pass right over the top of your pipe without giving you a light. The trick then is to not fight the wind, but to use it to your advantage. Position yourself so that the wind carries the flame into your bowl. Yeah, it's bizarre. The easiest way to get a light now is to point your bowl straight into the wind. Automotive enthusiasts could compare this to a ram air intake. You can supercharge your hits. I should mention that this lighter doesn't have some of the features that frustrated me about the various older models. It powers on immediately when you open the lid, no separate switch. The lid is sturdy with a bi-stable mechanism, snaps firmly open or closed. It doesn't time out if you leave the lid open for a while. That was frustrating with this one because you would have to close and reopen it if you waited too long. It has a momentary activation switch which allows you to go tap, 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 unlike this one that stays on or these that have delays before they light. And it's an ambidextrous design, won't cause problems for left-handed people like this one. I should address the battery life. It's not great. Charge it before you go out for the day, or buy more than one so you can always have a fully charged one on standby. They do recharge quickly. It's also worth mentioning how quiet it is. You can hear a high-pitched whine from all the rest of these, but not this one. Just a tick when you turn it on or off, and a crackle when there's turbulent lightning. But in quiescent conditions, it's silent while operating. Curiously, they do make noise when you bring two of them near one another. I'm not sure, but three of them may form the basis of a rudimentary time travel device. 
You can buy one of these lighters from Keyzen for $36 with free shipping, or $32 each for more than one. They're available in six colors. I like the matte black version best because no fingerprints, but you can also get shiny versions in black, blue, silver chrome, gold, or this rainbow color. They're much cheaper if you buy straight from China, but of course you'll have to wait a lot longer for overseas delivery. More and more resellers are popping up on Amazon all the time, with prices as low as $20 each, though you get a more limited selection of colors at that price point. Some of these come in the same simple packaging I saw from Keyzen, others have a fancier clamshell box. I'll put a bunch of links for you in the video description. Among these I found a slightly different model. Note the button and lights are round, and the cap doesn't have the trapezoidal projection on the bottom. But the probes are the same, and the button and lights are in the same positions, and at least one reseller offers both in the same listing, so I suspect these might have the same guts internally. This model is definitely different, as it has four multicolored lights instead of five blue ones, and the probes have a different design. I dislike those tacky jewels on the top, though. Here's another example of a similar type, but I don't like that touch-sensitive style of activation button. Would love to see more products like this in the future. Improved battery life would be great, of course. Smaller size and plastic construction for lighter weight would be welcomed. How about putting a solar cell on one side so it can trickle charge from ambient light? Even if it took an hour of direct sunlight to generate enough charge for just a short spark, that could still be very useful at times. Would be ideal if the battery could be removed so it would meet FAA guidance to carry aboard aircraft. Not that meeting FAA guidance would stop the TSA from confiscating it from you, but it'd be a step. I have had some problems with them, unfortunately, so to explain, I'll give you a teardown to show the internals. Just one screw on the bottom and the cover slides right off. Two plastic pieces for the button and lights will fall out. The cap assembly is held in place with this pin. After you remove it, the other side pops right out. The first problem was entirely my fault. I kicked the cord while it was charging, whipping it to the ground and breaking the charging jack loose. I don't fault the product for being flimsy. That was pretty rough. Turned out to be a pretty easy fix though. Just held it in place with an alligator clip and reflowed the solder with a light touch from my soldering iron. The other problems were not my fault. Internal electrical shorts. The first silver chrome one I bought gave me a mild shock a couple times and then it just stopped working with a glow visible on the inside. I wasn't able to fix it, but I sure tried, with some comedic results. <laughs> Fuck! <Wow. laughs> Wait a minute. Why is it still on? Shit, shit, shit. Back away slowly. <laughs> uh, did I... Oh, there we go. Make sure I'm not in the path. God damn it. Fuck. That was dumb. I bought another silver chrome one to replace it, which quickly developed similar problems. No, oh. Not sure if that was just a coincidence or if the chrome makes it more conductive and likely to short. So I've seen two out of five die, which is not a great record. But if you include the ones my buddy bought too, we've only had two out of eight fail, which is a little better at least. A word of warning about damaging your pieces. Depending on what material your pipe is made out of, you should avoid holding the lighter like this so the spark passes through it. This is a pipe I made for my wife out of black pipestone, which is a sort of mudstone. When we first got the new lighter, we were using it a lot in the dark while watching TV and didn't notice this as it was happening. Look at all these pit marks. I'll sacrifice one more spot to show you a slow-mo close-up. I'm gonna have to sand this down and repolish it anyway. This is how electric discharge machining works, by the way. So, just try to hold it like this, and not like this. And not all materials are affected by this issue. I suspect it has to do with some combination of electrical conductivity and surface hardness. I make most of my pipes from marble, and that doesn't seem affected at all. Sparks bounce all the way around, never goes through. Let's do a quick survey with some old pipes and scrap material. Don't expect glass to be damaged. No marks at all. It was my wife's when we first met. I made the snap-on cap for her myself. It's kind of neat. It rotates out of the way. You don't even need to snap it off. But uh, eventually I made her a stone pipe, and that got put in the back drawer. 
I don't have any wooden pipes, but let's try this block of basswood. That probably will leave a mark. Hmm, not really, though. Ooh, <laughs> yep. I don't have any ceramic pipes, so let's try this old coffee mug. Nope. Not leaving any marks on ceramic. Even when it goes through, not leaving a mark. How about red pipestone? I don't want to ruin that one. So here's just uh, some rough material. Yep, left a mark there. How about some calcite? Don't want to risk that, so we'll try this uh, rough piece that it came from. Ow, yeah, that's hot. Cooked it. But when I just send it right through, it doesn't leave a mark at the spot. Let's try alabaster with household varnish. I don't use that anymore. Yeah, that's, that's no good. This one was junk by now anyway, it's quite old. This is also peach alabaster, but has an automotive engine compartment clear coat that is much more robust. So when I hit the edge and it uh, got high temperature, I mean, that's just thermal damage. But uh, when you go through, it's okay. Labradorite. Uh, this one is quite nice. I've never used it, so I really don't want to risk that. But <laughs> this one should probably be cut up into a pair of teardrop earrings or something. Let's try this. Yeah, that's leaving some marks. Well, I think I've covered everything now. Welcome to the future and enjoy. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.